Hi, my name is Jeff Horning and I'm the Executive Director of the Agribusiness Council of Oregon. As part of our commitment to work with our members in creating a safe working environment, we're partnering with Safe Corporation to develop this ATV training video. Agriculture is a very rewarding industry to be a part of, but statistically, it is also one of the riskiest industries to work in. We're dedicated to help bring safety awareness to our members and encourage you to use this video as one more way to make safe work practices a routine part of every day you spend on the farm or ranch. This video focuses on some very practical and important factors that are often overlooked when utilizing all-terrain vehicles. ATVs are an important tool to be used on the farm. As with any tool, it's important that they be used correctly to reduce risk. With me today are Kirk Lloyd and Edgar Garcia, safety trainers who are gonna help illustrate how to use these correctly in a farm environment. The principles of vehicle stability are easiest to learn if we use a tractor for an example. Here's my tractor with a heavy load in the bucket and a counterweight on the back. All agricultural vehicles are affected by the same principles. Weight distribution, motion of the vehicle, hillsides, and uneven terrain will all affect stability. If any vehicle becomes unstable, bad things will happen. It may just be property damage, but sometimes it will result in injury and loss of life. Vehicle stability is something everyone working in agriculture needs to understand. A loaded tractor like this could safely be driven on a hillside. The centrifugal forces of turning a corner would not likely tip it over either. Under these conditions, the tractor is really very stable and safe. Now, look at the tractor with the bucket held high. Under these conditions, the tractor has much less resistance to tipping. At a moderate speed, just hitting a rough spot in the ground might be enough to make it unstable. A quick cornering maneuver would almost certainly cause a wreck. When using a tractor, the size and position of the operator doesn't really have much effect on overall stability. After all, even on a small tractor like this, a 200-pound operator would only be about 3% of the combined weight that the tires must support. But on an ATV, the weight and position of the operator is a much bigger factor in determining overall stability. If we assume a 200-pound operator on a 600-pound machine, the operator is about 25% of the total weight. Where the operator is positioned will have a really significant effect on overall stability. To counteract the forces that will be acting on the ATV when it is in motion, the operator must be an active rider, changing positions to maintain stability. We have a chance to meet with Steve Lyon, a professional ATV safety trainer and founder of Lyon Off-Road. Steve's going to give us a lesson on how a skilled operator can minimize the risk of getting in an unstable situation. Steve, we appreciate you helping us with this. Okay. One of the first things Steve demonstrated was the importance of sitting in the best possible spot when getting on the machine in the first place. Steve recommends sliding to the front part of the seat and placing feet toward the rear part of the footrest. He notes that many operators will sit on the back part of the seat cushion with their feet forward. However, in this position, the machine is much more likely to backflip on a steep climb. In a moment, we will show some other situations where being in the correct position can really help manage dynamic stability. Watch Steve as he approaches a rough and sloping field edge. See how he rises up from the seat to get ready? This action makes the machine much more stable. 
At first, I found it difficult to understand exactly why his actions were affecting the stability of the machine. I thought that raising his body off the seat was like raising the loader bucket on the tractor, that it would make things worse, not better. When the operator is seated, most of the person's weight is supported by the cushion. On this machine, the operator's weight is being carried about 33 inches above the ground. When the operator's weight is transferred down to the feet, the weight is actually applied to the machine at a much lower level. On this machine, the weight is now being carried at about 12 inches off the ground. It seems backwards at first, but standing up actually lowers the center of gravity and increases stability. The other thing to note is the position of Steve's arms and legs as he approaches this potentially challenging location. His elbows are up and his knees are in a shock absorber position for maximum control of the machine. See how he transfers his weight to the uphill side? If the tires should slip in the dirt and drop the machine down into that rut, he is ready to offset those forces that could tip the machine over. Similar principles apply to cornering. Steve is up off the seat and transferring weight to the inside of the turn to improve stability. Watch Steve as he approaches this steep hill. He'll not only rise up out of the seat, but he will transfer his weight forward over the handlebars to keep the front of the machine down and minimize the risk of a backflip. As Steve approaches this very steep down slope, he will transfer weight to the back, again to improve stability of the machine. Another element of stability is riding the ATV on and off transport vehicles. Just like riding up or downhill, using steep narrow ramps can cause instability and unsecured ramps can shift. Permanent loading stations like this can be constructed inexpensively to reduce the need to load and unload on a steep slope. Another factor that affects stability is cargo. Keep the load down to the capacity of the machine and adjust your riding to the conditions. One of the more challenging loads to carry is a liquid load. When the machine is on a slope, the weight in the tank shifts to the downhill side and reduces stability. Keep your speed down and don't even attempt to cross a slope that is too steep for this unstable load. A tank on a trailer is more stable than a tank mounted directly on the ATV and is a better choice. The most dangerous cargo of all is an additional rider. A passenger always makes an ATV less stable and greatly reduces the operator's ability to be an active rider. And not only is a wreck more likely to occur, but more people are at risk for injury, too. If there is a need to transport riders, use a machine designed for that purpose. Many ATV riders are injured when they hit an obstacle in their path of travel. It's easy to become distracted, looking at your fields, looking at your cattle. It's very important to be constantly watching where you are going. If you are doing a job where it will be difficult to stay focused on the path of travel, you should choose a more stable vehicle. Thanks for watching this video. It contains some practical guidance on how to make you a better rider but it will only do that if you put it into practice. In addition, rider stability is just one part of a comprehensive farm vehicle safety program. I've personally known four people who died in wrecks, riding quads, and many more who've been seriously injured. These were not recreational riders. These were people working on farms here in Oregon. These were also people that I cared about and that I miss from my life. One thing I've realized is they were using an ATV for a job 
that could have been done with a lower risk vehicle. I think many times we choose the ATV because it's handy and fun, not because it's necessary for the job. Please restrict the use of ATVs to just those situations where it is necessary. Riding carefully and skillfully will help, but the real key to saving lives is deciding whether an ATV is the right vehicle for the job.